Well, peace and blessings and good evening again. Welcome to another edition of King Talk Tuesdays. I'm your host, Andy King, the show Real Views, Real News, and Real Talk. Here on King Talk, we cover so many topics, whether it's education, healthcare, economics, spirituality, and so much more. I look forward to you all joining me throughout the dynamic week for more dynamics to inspiring conversations. King Talk Tuesdays airs every Tuesday. We stream live on Facebook as well as our YouTube channel at 8 p.m. King Talk also airs every Thursday, every Thursday on Fire Channel 2136 and Optimal Channel 70. We also stream on a number of streaming services such as Roku TV, Amazon Prime, Millennial TV 24, and Clash TV. I encourage viewers all around to tune in, tune in, tune in, tune in, tune in to our and subscribe to our YouTube page, King Talk Tuesdays, that's right, our YouTube channel, which is King Talk Tuesday, so you don't miss any of our previous episodes. You can also check your local listings to see when King Talk is airing throughout the week. You know, I want to thank everybody who has been tuning in and watching King Talk Tuesdays for the past couple of years. Because you know what I say, right? People pay attention to people who participate. So tell a friend, tell a neighbor, King Talk Tuesdays is on. And you can send us a comment or in our chat, our Facebook chat or our YouTube chat, or just email us at kingtalktuesdays at gmail.com. Again, our email address is kingtalktuesdays at gmail.com. We'll be right back with another inspiring conversation on the strength of a woman on King Talk Tuesdays after a message from some of our friends. Oh yeah, as Marvin Gaye would say, just want to know what's going on. Well, what's going on in two weeks? Flag Football League is coming up at Mount St. Michael Middle um, High School. So will anybody who's interested in joining and having their sons or their daughters, they're going to sign up for the flag football that's going to kick off the summer. Well, I'm actually next week, um, Edwin Diaz, who is the president of flag football there for the Bronx, New York Giants, going to come on and talk a little bit more about what they're doing and two Saturdays here in the Wiggy Down Bronx. Secondly, we we'll to let you know that New York City summer youth employment is right around the corner for all our teens. We want them all to sign up from the ages 14 to 24. They can visit nyc.gov forward slash S-Y-E-P for applications and more information. And thirdly, today, Honorable Eric Adams, our good mayor of the city of New York, signed five bills today helping struggling homeowners give youth people a voice in the juvenile center detention and support our families and children in shelters and also provide support for our gun violence interrupters. Two of these bills include intro 436, which strengthens the juvenile justice system by establishing a juvenile justice board and intro. As a former New York City Council who chaired the Juvenile Justice Committee, getting our children engaged in their own survival and own living is the way to help us build better adults. And that's why I say people pay attention to people who participate. We're grateful and thankful for this piece of intro and legislation that's going to empower and inspire our youth. Next, we want to let them know that Intro 522, which will ensure greater mental health resources for New Yorkers living in shelters by requiring mental health professionals to provide either on-site health or telehealth support with families and children living in shelters. Well, after we talked about what was going on, we need to talk about what's happening today. So for the last two weeks, um, March is considered, one of the things is considered is Women's History Month. And what we decided to do on for the whole month of March is talk about, discuss the strength of a woman. You know, the woman, as you hear, is the backbone of this and the mother of that and the creator of all this other energy throughout the world. Well, there's a certain strength that our sisters have. And when you fall down, as mama picks you up. If you need some guidance, grandma is there for you. If you need some teaching, there's an educator right there. And if you just got somebody who needs to hold your hand and say, hey, it's going to be all right because Christ got you. Hey, that's where all our sisters come into play with that strength and that fortitude allows them to persevere because we know women have gone through so many trials and tribulations, especially the black woman has, has gone through their share of trials and tribulations. Well, we want to talk about it today with a couple of guests who are backstage waiting to come on and, and give us their information and their experience and their wisdom. Um, first, we want to introduce first time to King Talk Tuesday. She is the president of Invest in Youth. NYC again. She's going. She's she's the president of investing in our youth because we know that's what we need. You got to invest in you and your youth, Sister Darling Walter Morgan. Welcome to King Talk Tuesday. Thank you, Andy. Good to be here. Oh, uh, uh, we're so glad you were able to join us, and we look forward to more inspiring conversations as the as the hour goes by. Uh, and next, we want to bring in young sister who is in the schools as a mama 
and knows how to get it right. I have the pleasure of working with her um, as with the Bronx Youth Empowerment Program in the neighborhood and the community, but she's also a powerful professional in our school system. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my good friend, Latoya Reed Payne, King Talk Tuesday. Good evening, everyone. It's good to good see you. Uh, we want to make sure that we bring all our guests in, and we have another guest that will be joining us a little later. Um, and we're looking forward to Regina Wilson tuning in um, and being a part of tonight's show. So let's just jump into some of the questions that have been hitting the scene already. Wow. All right. The ladies are jumping in. That's what we need. That's what we need. Leaders, ladies are on. So for both of you, I want to give you both these questions. And I will start with you, Sister Darlene. We just want to know in your mind, what is the importance of Women's History Month and teaching our communities the achievements of women in our communities? Well, it's extremely important. As everyone knows, without women, there would be no us, right? And so we are the mothers of civilization. We are the nurturers, you know, and the backbone behind, I believe, behind most good men. There are some women out there really working to help support them. And we've made major contributions to history, yet, you know, having always gotten the accolades that were deserved. So it's important for everyone to recognize the contributions that we have made and how much of a difference they have made in building this country. Wow, I really appreciate that because that hits right to who we are as a woman and our value of women that have on today's society. Sister Reed Payne, talk to us the same question to you, the importance of a Women's History Month you know, and how do we educate people to understand the importance of women in our communities? I make sure that, you know, I let my kids at school, my daughters at home, even in my girls, I get, let them know that they are the backbone of the community. Like they are the mothers, the foremothers, the mothers that are going to come up. So we let them know that they are our future. And we make sure that they know that they strength is relies in them. Mm. The strength, oh, oh, back to that word, the strength of a woman. All right, now, strong mamas produce strong babies, and strong babies produce strong communities. So um, thank you for both of you being strong mamas. So I, let's go back to who you are, because people want to be, I always got to qualify, what qualifies you to even have this conversation on King Talk this evening. <laughs> now, talk to us a little about Sister Darling, about the organization that you're the president of. So I'm president of Invest in You, Inc. And it is an organization that I formed years ago because I felt that the financial, mental, physical, spiritual health of women was at stake. And we needed to find that safe space to be able to support each other. So we give annual retreats where women can get away together and talk about the issues. We have so much in common. And together and united there's so much we can do to support each other and to help advance our communities the main theme of it is for us to invest in ourselves because if we can't invest in ourselves how can we truly invest in others right the better we do the stronger we are the more we're able to give to our communities our children our families and really help to uplift people educators you know our communities and as a whole Mm, okay. Well, I thank you because there's no greater investment than anyone can put in themselves. And I know you say the you because you're talking to the, the you know person that across this, who's sitting across. With, there's no greater investment than people can put into themselves. So you know, and a lot a lot of children don't even understand the importance of all the investment that happened to them, and they think they can get it on their own. They do it on no. Someone didn't teach you how to read in third grade. You be messing it up in seventh grade. So, you know, that's what it is. Build, putting the best that you can put in you. Miss Reed, talk to us a little bit about who you are and the work that you do. Well, I am a paraprofessional in the New York City Board of Education. I am also the executive secretary for the Bronx Youth Empowerment Program. I'm a mom, a nurturer, a lover, a giver. So I wear many hats, many titles. Mm, okay, well, I, I dig it. Wearing many hats now. That's the one thing people don't respect about our women, the many hats that you wear. Since you walked, talked about the many hats, what are some of the hats that, darling, do you share with sisters that they must hold on to each and every day? You said some of the hats that we share? Or, or you must keep on every day. That you must keep on every day? 
I would, I would say nurturer is definitely one because by nature we're nurturers. And um, I read a study the other day about our young people and girls in particular, right? And so 57% of our young ladies have felt depressed over in, in 2021 as a result of the pandemic. And the CDC did that study. So anybody can go and look it up. But 57%? That's three and five. And so we have to do a great job as women of nurturing our young ladies. Um, we also have to do a good job of making sure that we understand that our health is not just about our mental, it's about our mental health, our physical health, our spiritual health, and our financial health. Too often we come up not even talking and discussing the finances, our financial health, and that is extremely critical, you know, just as women, that hat of just making sure that we're prepared for things that may come. And so there's a lot of hats that we have to wear. Um, and I say supporter, supporter of our children, supporter of our men, supporter of our communities, you know, so we wear quite a few hats, educators, you know, we have to be able to educate, you know, just, and, and back in the day we educated neighbors the children of neighbors right and there's so much going on in this world the violence that's going on is unspeakable and so we have to do a much better job of educating our young people as well and making sure that they understand all the opportunities that are out there for them and that we you know search for them and you know make them available so there's a lot of hats we have to wear especially today and and as sister just being a sister to another woman mm, mm. I, 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 I don't know what you just said but it just sounds like you're talking <laughs> about five people in one body so <laughs> that's strong you know you got to wear cover all of that you know because i know some guys they can't wear one hat without messing it up <laughs> falling so i appreciate your answer on that miss reed Payne. now i've watched you work around kids and let's stay on the topic of the different hats as you as you know what's necessary to wear a certain hat on any given moment how do you keep a steady balance on what hat has to be worn at any given moment in time so i i try to stretch myself a little more than i need to but i know that as me working in the school sometimes i know when i just need to be a listener for the kids. Sometimes they might not need the advice. They might just need the shoulder to lean on or listen in. So I've learned to become a listener. And if my input is needed, then I've learned to become a nurturer. I've learned to become the parent, the mother that they don't have. We have a student who just recently lost his mom at school and I've become like that person for him. He comes to me and talks to me about any and everything. Like we, you know him, Mr. King, we call him my little advocate. And I'm there for him. I make sure that he eats in the morning. I make sure that he has lunch. I make sure that he gets home on time. And I help with homework if necessary. So I become everything for them when they need me to be that. Mm. So it sounds like um, y'all community moms as well. Uh, yes. Uh, so I heard you heard you say, Donnie, about your program to you. Now, how does your program take those hats that women wear each and every day and teach the young sisters in your program? So we, we have, I, so outside of the business that I have, I also work for the Department of Ed as the um, Director of Mentoring and Strategic Partnerships. And so with that, we also have a program called um, ROSE where we um, provide young ladies with a safe space for them to discuss many of the issues that tend to derail them during their high school year. So this is for high school girls, but it's about making sure that our young people have a space to be able to talk about things that they are going through and that we have the resources to actually provide some support services for them because our young people are in need of support services. I sat in a program one day and there were at least 25 girls in a circle and they were talking. And so the, the question was posed to them, what's wrong? Because they seemed like you know, they were disengaged and they talked about they felt isolated, they felt depressed, they felt sad, and they attributed it to the pandemic. And so we have to be mindful that our young people are still going through a lot as a result. And so, 
you know, that's another reason why we provide the supports for women as well and mothers, because if we're not whole and we're not investing in ourselves, it's hard for us to support our young people the way that they need to be supported. Mm, you just touched on something supporting ourselves. Talk to us a little bit about what your program does when it comes to supporting the system, whether they have children or they don't have children. Sister Reed Payne. Oh, um, for me, I like to support everyone. Like I try to be, like I said, a, a woman of many hats. I try to make sure that I know the resources within my community. I make sure that I know where the pantries are. I make sure I know where it might be a therapist session that goes on. Um, as I started having children, I was a part of a program, which is a house on Beekman where they had mommy and me classes. So I try to send people that are single moms or newly um, moms that are newly becoming and send them to a hop because they truly helped me. So it's always someone that gave you the stepping stone to be a better you. So I try to find the resources that are needed to make sure that they have them and make sure that they can be a productive woman in society just like I am. Mm, mm. All right. Now, I heard both of you share a little bit about what someone gave to you. You went to a program to help because as we, I, I'm a dad myself, but I do understand that there really isn't no textbook for raising children. Every spirit is different. Every flesh is different. And you got to manage might be some basics, basics that go down. How do you both, I'll start with you, Sister Darling. How does your program, how do you work with sisters who have grandparents um, or a generation or two above us? How do you engage them to be a part of the strength of a woman each and every day? And so one of the things we do in our um, company is our retreats a lot of times, well, we do retreats and a lot of times they're intergenerational. And so when women bring their daughters and their mothers to um, a retreat for them to be able to connect in ways that they don't often have the time to connect because we get so caught up in the hustle and bustle of daily living that we don't take the time that's needed sometimes to get away with them and to be able to talk with a large group of women about a lot of the issues that occur. We also send care packages out to families and to um, you know sisters that are going through um, different challenges in life. And so it's really about being there and being supportive. We, we deal with um, engaging activities. So, you know, it, it's time to let down the hat and, you know, maybe do go on a paint and sip with a group of women or to um, do, do a candle making class. So there's a lot of different types of activities because we know there's several ways that we have to attack things so that we can reach women and and reach young people and, and bring them together because the, the communication gap is so huge sometimes. And so we do a lot of intergenerational activities to make sure that you know we can help support the communication and, and the advancement of women overall. You, you, and a very important word you used, communication. How great is communication for effective strength or how can communication destroy the strength of a woman? Sister Reed, you want to take that one on first? So communication is very, very important. Sometimes kids don't realize that even though we're adults and even though we're a mom, we've been through the same things that they have been to, through. So sometimes we have to just communicate with them and come to their level and let them know, hey, I did that. I've been there. I've done it. I might have did it better than you, but I've done it. So sometimes we need to let them know that just because we're mom or your teacher or your auntie, we know what you're going through. We've done it. It, it. it might be a little more now because of the way the world is, but we've been through it. So it's good to communicate with them and let them know that I'm, I'm a person just like you. Just because I'm mommy or auntie or your teacher, I'm still a person. I still need somebody to talk to as well. So communication is very important. I like that because a 12 year old or a nine year old or a 13 year old, they are like nobody else was 13 before they were 13. All of a sudden they're 30 old. Yeah, no, no, no. Right. <laughs> right. It's good to let them know. Like that's why um I had started a um a tall and small dance when I was on the PTA PS41. 
to let the kids know that, listen, I like to dance. I like to sing. I like to have fun. Um, it's not all about me being mommy all the time. Sometimes I want to get down and paint and sip like Miss Darlene says. Sometimes we, may, I've done paint and sips at the school, like with the kids. Like we just want them to know that we're not always mommy. We are human too. We like to communicate and we have been through some of the things that you've been through. Well, speaking of communicating and someone who's whose job requires them each and every day to put out problems, put out fires, save lives. I want to bring her into the show. I want to welcome my good sister, who, who now again is the president again for a third time. See, they, she, she got in. They said, go go have a seat. He said, wait, we ain't get it right. They bring her back in and clean this up. Oh, shuck it up. We got to bring the queen back up in here again to get it right. We call oh, my good sister. Welcome the president of the Vulcan Society, Sister Regina. Wilson. Welcome to King Talk Tuesday, Sister Regina. <laughs> How are you? Uh-oh. Your, your Hi, microphone? good evening, everyone. I'm good. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Good evening. Yes, we can. Thank good you. Evening. Thank you for joining us this evening. We were just getting into the thick of communications before. My viewers um, who may have never met you before or know, talk to them a little about who is Regina Wilson. <laughs> Uh-oh. Get your mic on. There you go. Okay. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. All right. I think my lead. We can hear you. That's technology that is sideways sometimes, you know. <laughs> sometimes it kicks in, sometimes it kicks off, and then you get stuck like Max Max Headroom. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But that's okay. We, Regina, we're just gonna we're gonna get you out screen and then we'll bring you back in uh, as technology does what techno technology done. But for those who don't know, hopefully we get her uh system together. She comes up, she is a very strong, powerful woman, FDNY, part of 9-11, uh, rose up to the ranks, um, uh, and, and leads the fraternal organization of uh the Vulcan Society in the FDNY. I've had to know her for a while uh, as a council member when we fought. And making sure that that there was fairness and when it came to FDNY, um, even when there was hazing that was going on, the lawsuit that was filed against um, some of the firefighters for hazing, able to get the rules in place that ended hazing, especially for a rookie, especially black firefighters that were being hazed. Um, and then getting the balance. We're talking about getting the balance. Um, I'm not mad at the FDNY that for historically you've been white, um, but now this is a gig that we have black folks who can do the job, and and we and we have due the course of course of history, whether what town you was in, maybe not New York City, may not have been black all the time, but there are other towns across the United States where we have black firefighters. So I think, Regina, I think we got you working again. Um, you can come on. There. Okay, there we go. Talk to us. Let's say talk to us. Are you back? Yeah, can you guys hear me? Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. So I was explaining a little bit to our viewers who you are, the strong sister who has done so much for FDNY and leading the ship there for the Vulcan Society. So Talk to our viewers a little bit more about who you are and your definition of a strength of a woman. Okay, well, great. I'm glad to be here, and I'm I'm glad that uh, it's finally working. And technology is crazy, but anyway, um, good evening, everyone. My name is Regina Wilson. I am a New York City fire a New York City firefighter. I work out of Brooklyn, New York. Um, if anybody is um, near the Barclays Center. My firehouse is right behind the Barclays Center. Um, as of February 16th, I've been a New York City firefighter for 24 years. Um, I am the president of the Vulcan Society, um, which is an African-American organization um, that's filled with uh, firefighters, fire inspectors, EMTs, and civilian staff of the FDNY. Um, our organization is 83 years old, and um, we've been... Um, the, uh, in the forefront of trying to gain um, diversity and in, um, into the fire department for women and blacks and people of color. And um, um, the strength of a woman comes from <laughs> really from being a firefighter. I think uh, I always say that this job uh, really helped me to uh, bring more out of the, the strength that a woman already has um, because of the difficulties of this job and um, being in an industry that's predominantly male um, and is a job that is was never 
that the fire department would imagine that a lot of women would be able to uh, push themselves towards. I think I've uh, been able to um, gather all of the strength that I needed, um, the confidence in myself. I've been able to build on um, a lot of uh, the doubts that I had that pushed me over the line to allow me to be fearless and to also to gain a bigger heart and understanding of, um, you know, of what, uh, what I do as a woman and the strength of a woman. So I think just the fire service itself and um, being able to sometimes be the only person in a room gathers the strength that you need in order to, uh, you know, to really stand out and be great. So this department has really helped me in that way. Mm, mm, mm. Being the only one in the room. How many times have we had to heard that and say that before? Um, before we go to the break, how would you, and I'm going to go back to you, Regina, how would you help somebody, especially a young sister, 15-year-old, maybe going into a school that's different from what she was raised up around or headed out to college and going to in this whole different environment? How do you help, help them? What advice do you give them about being the only one in the room? Um, what I think is, I think sometimes is it comes cliche to a lot of younger people and they may hear it a lot, is that like you can be or do whatever you want to be. But until I think you um, see the people in the positions that you never thought of, if you don't think out of the box and sometimes create your path in your own lane and to not be fearful to do it. Um, I think that's when you'll really understand who you are and the core of who you are as a person. So I would tell any young person to be fearless and to not allow other people to really um, tell you who you are. Right. You'll you'll begin to grow into yourself as you get older, but you'll only really reach the pinnacle of being um, who you are and the greatness of who you are when you don't allow fear to get in the way. Um Fear, to me, I think fear can kill you. You know, um, it can keep you from um, just enjoying life and being full of life and being able to um, experience things or to be things that you've never dreamt of before. And sometimes other people's fear, they put them on you. But until you realize that you need to break through those barriers and, um, you know, get to that that point of who you are and what you want to be. Um, that's the only time you're ever going to realize um, the core and the strength of a woman is 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 taking away all of those fears. Mm. Fearless <laughs> is the answer of the day. Fearless. All right, I like that. I like that. Hey, well, thank you for being fearless. But we are currently right now at the halftime of King Talk Tuesday. Welcome back to King Talk Tuesday. I'm Andy King, your host, the show with real views, real news, and real talk. We air every Tuesday at 8 p.m. live on Facebook as well as our YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, King Talk Tuesdays. We also air every Thursday at 10:30 p.m. on Optimal Channel 70 and Files Channel 2136. We're also on a number of streaming services such as Roku TV, Prime Television, Millennium. 24 and Clash TV. So if you got a thought or a comment, you can email us as well as King Talk Tuesdays at gmail.com. You can email us at King Talk Tuesdays at gmail.com. You know, halftime is one of those points in time that uh, I do just want to offer kind words of caring, joy, praise, prayer, and just a little bit of information of wisdom that ever fits the soul. You know, in the last couple of years, it's been rough for everyone on this globe. Um, when a play comes down, no one is excluded from it. Um, I always say if Connet loses the electricity on, on the neighborhood, all of us don't have any electricity. So we got to just figure out how to be better together and, and whatever that together looks like. And our young people are always emulating adults. So I ask to all our adults, let's be better to ourselves so we can be better to each other. I send up a prayer for anyone who's going through any challenges, any health challenges, any mental challenges, economic challenges, more importantly, spiritual challenges. For me, I ask everyone to find a center piece to keep you center. For me, it's the most high in Christ. I don't waver on that and I stand true through it. You live through the good moments and you survive through those moments that aren't that good because through the strength of Christ, we'll walk and get you through it each and every day. So I say a prayer to all my community. You do the same. Say a prayer to your community, your neighbors, your friends, your brothers, your frenemies, your enemies, whoever they are. Just say a prayer. 
you know, and get yourself through the day um, and watch the most high do what he does as he gave us the promise to do so as we do what he asked us to do. So again, we're here on King Talk Tuesday tonight. We are having a great conversation with three wonderful women who are just dropping on the strength of the women. But I want to give a shout out to some people who put some stuff in the chat um, who said who's saying hello, manners and etiquette. Barbara Gibson Legrand, she's just giving everybody a good shout out and saying hello. We thank you, Sister Gibson, for tuning in. Miss G, um, looking at Cheryl DeWitt, she's saying blessings to all. Miss Toya Reed, good to see you as a panelist. <laughs> Happy Women's Month to all the participating and who are listening. And then we, oh, Brother Aaron Barnett, oh, oh my 100 black man brother. He says, salute to the sisters. Salute to you, Brother King. Thank you for all that you do. Appreciate those kind words. And the Bronx Youth Empowerment chimed in. Says one of my hats. Okay, let's see what they're saying. One of my hats is the one the one I carry myself as a good example for others first. Mm. Then being a member to kids in my community, especially those at my school, sometimes just to listen to them and give them support and whatever they may be at that time. Okay, well, we thank you. We thank you, Yepers, and we appreciate everybody who is tuning in. Let's get back to the second half because conversation is going to flow and grow. We got four dot three dynamic sisters here, Sister Darling. We want to thank you for inspiring you and everybody else. We got to give Sister Reed, who is with children all day long. Trust me, I know it is. We got to wipe those snotty little noses every time and pick them up and get them right back out in, in the grind of life. And then Regina Wilson, who's constantly saving lives and saving souls. So thank you all, sisters, for that. So it is Women's History Month. So let's jump in a little bit about because we did get a question. And they wanted to ask Miss Reed Payne, and they said, um, what have you seen within schools to honor Women's History Month? And do you think there's enough women history being taught mm, to our students? So, so far, we've seen um, we're doing door decorating contests where they pick a woman in history who we might not see on a regular. We try to steer them away from the... Coretta Scott Kings, the Betty Shabazz, the Maya Angelou, the Rosa Parks. We tried to get them to dig deeper into women's history to find out somebody, find something new about somebody that they don't know. I feel like they don't teach us enough about women history and the strength that a woman holds. So I feel like it could be a lot more being done, but in my school, we're seeing a lot. We're seeing a lot. We're learning new things every day about different women. Okay. Well, Sister Darlene, as you invest in you, what are you investing? And as a matter of fact, what are the age ranges that you did that you service? In terms of the retreat or the uh, in the whole program? In the whole program uh, okay. What are the ages of the young uh, people that you service? So, in terms of the Rose program, it's high school girls, um, you know, fourteen to eighteen, and then in terms of our retreats, it's women and young ladies 21 and older mm, okay so do, do does your program itself dive in you heard mr reed you read Payne talk about the school should be doing more uh than the first you know the only five that they condition us on like they're the only black women that have ever done anything or any women has ever done anything i uh, if someone asked me who's, who's who's the first person in who's who's woman should be for me it gotta be my mama or my grandmama that's gonna be the first person that was an inspiration for me why, you know, if my mama was doing it right, why am I looking at somebody else's mama, you know, to say that mama was okay? I, I got to call my mama first. <laughs> so to talk to us. How do you and your program engage in that conversation other than um, no disrespect to my mamas and, in the, and, and the women, but to the, those, the five women that, you know, Ms. Reed Payne just discussed? With? So one of the things that we're doing is we're bringing young ladies together throughout New York City schools that are um, in the Rose program and in Project Pivot. And we are having a Women's History Month celebration. In fact, this Friday in partnership with York College to bring girls together to teach them about some of the um, women in history that they may not have heard about. So we have, um, we, we also have, um, a networking mixer for them. So, you know, part of, I think, one of our disconnects is that we don't expose young people to as much as we need to expose them to. And so the experience of being able to go somewhere and actually network with women who are out there doing some phenomenal things is far and few in between. And so we have a lot of women coming to the event and we have a lot of 
young sisters who will be there and will have a little passport book where they have to go around and actually meet some women and talk to them about exactly what they do and, and be able to, you know, learn the type of questions that you ask because our young people need to be able to network and they need to be able to know their history and not just the the history that's in the past our, our present history you know i always say that her story right is what we're living today and so each of us in terms of women in terms of you know our young sisters are part of her story and everything that we do is part of that so we we are able to write our own history and so we're bringing our young ladies together to to teach them about their current history their past history and empower them to be able to write their own history uh, i love it i love it that that's really powerful and, and thank you for you all doing that one of the things that the bronx youth empowerment has done and they're doing again um next month is what we have a series called um, girls to women, um, teaching girls and partnering them up with women, what it is to be a productive woman. And if no one tells you, um, no, you're not supposed to walk around cussing all day long. You might think it's acceptable from watching the videos and the TikToks. You know, if you think certain dances are appropriate, it's not appropriate for a young lady. You know, just like we did with the boys, it's not, a, not appropriate for you to walk around with your pants down all day long. But if no one is telling you these things or showing you where it, the path of leech on, the society does have our children flipped upside down. So I want to I'm going to go into this with Regina and I want you all to chime in because we've talking about women's women's history month. Now there's three black women on the show. Now we know you, black women are the progenitor of life with the black male, but we do have our white sisters. We do have our Indian sisters. We do have our and, and I want people to agree with when I say black, if you Puerto Rican, Jamaican, Dominican, Dominican Republic. Honduras, Mexico, Trinidad, Tobago, Brooklyn, Bronx, Georgia, you black America. Okay. I just want to get that clear. I don't want to be separating because you, you Puerto Rico and you know you're Dominican and you know you Haitian and you know you're Jamaican, you know. At the end of the day, us, our reality is our reality. And we are not the progenitor. We don't we don't own the keys to the system here. We're assimilated into a system and trying to survive. So I just want to have that disclaimer off because I want to ask you now, how does that play itself out? for Women's History Month, when we start talking the history of women and how do we have a respectable conversation about women and Women's History Month that all women feel included and not left out? Regina? Um, well, I, I think that especially um, in my profession and being a woman in my profession, I don't, I don't try to just bring in um, one type of group of woman to, to be in my profession. I think um, I look for everybody with the, the quality and a heart to serve in this position. And, um, and I think that our struggle um, as women um, is stronger collectively if we come together in order to talk about the, some of the things that are similar as opposed to separating ourselves based on race, even though, you know, uh, Black women have had the hardest, um, uh, you know, struggle in America, and um, we, we're always the one that get the worst and get treated the worst, even though some some of the things that we gain uh, represents other uh, women that are in different racial groups. Um, I feel collectively as a whole, as if women were to come together and to be able to know that um, us working together would um, produce a lot more than these separations that are created by other people, um, it will even to, I think, empower us to be better, do better, and to have more of a fabric that we're leaving um, on this earth if we were to actually just take charge of everything. I think it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. <laughs> you want it done right, you know you got to get a woman anyway. So, I mean, <laughs> just give us the keys and let us do what we need to do. <laughs> well, you know, I, I can't really argue with that because as a former um, caseworker uh, for the CUNS, I watch women with three kids and bring home $200 a, a, a week and take care of the household. I don't even know how you do that, you know, um, and brothers get $2,000 and mess it up, <laughs> you know. So I applaud y'all for that. Um, last week, um, we had one of the sisters from the nation, and I've been watching um, Sister Shazara Ali. 
And I pose this question to you all because in her one of her speeches back in the 70s, she um, mentioned that the women's movement hurt the civil rights movement. Your thoughts on that? Anybody, just jump on in there. Don't be scared. This is, this is a real, real talk, real views, real news, real talk. Who would like to tackle that thought? The women's movement hurt the civil rights movement. I, I, I don't know that I necessarily 100% agree with that. Mm -hmm. I think that um, while as African Americans, we there, there was a lot we were lacking and that we needed, but also as women, you know, there were things we needed too. And so I think that um, when we start talking about equal rights and equality and fighting for our rights, there are several subgroups that really have to go out and support each other and get what they need. And so maybe it did, maybe there was some division during that time, um, but how can, how can we just sit back as women and, um, you know, not advocate for us to, to get equal pay, to be able to um, have a lot of the rights that we were not afforded early on. So I think that um, wh while there may be some truth to that, that it was very necessary and it's still necessary. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Um, anybody else want to tackle that? Um, yeah, I think I think I I definitely agree with that statement, but I because I feel like um, the the women's movement um, try to let people know that we're here, right? So you, you we let's go all the way back to voting, right? They didn't even want women to vote, um, and they were only allowing men to vote. So you had to fight to be able to have a voice, but um, fighting to have that voice, there are different needs. Uh, still till today that I think just black women have to deal with. If you look at the birth rates, you look at pay equity, you look at just the inclusiveness on how um, they are in even corporate America jobs. I think the, the women's movement uh, did a lot and, it, and it, um, I think it, it gave more rights to a lot of different people and didn't give as much rights to black women. But I think that movement still needed to be heard in order for people to know that, you know, we have a voice, we're able to make our own decisions. We should be able to, to work and be employed on our own. We should be able to start our own businesses. And um, the civil rights movement definitely um, embraced itself in that. But I think women all the time get left behind in that conversation. So mm -hmm. for us to be able to um, collectively come together as women and to let people know that we can make our own decisions and get things done. I think it was necessary to happen. Um, or, like I said before, a lot of people eat at the table and we're the ones out here doing the hunting and the killing. But unfortunately, it has to be done in order for us to be able to, to, to move forward and progress. Mm, I appreciate it. And trust me, this it wasn't a trick conversation but it's just just real conversation yeah. um and if and if i and if i just may add um so when i, I see a comment from uh brother barnett saying the woman suffrage movement out of the 1920s didn't include the black woman but they intentionally draw sisters away from the civil rights movement it divided and separated the black family which is what's supposed to be said at that conversation because everyone knows the black woman was the strength of the church the participation and all the work was being done, even though the men were leading the brain trust of it, but we counted on our women each and every day to be a part of that. So when women started looking at themselves as women first, not black first, well, in America, they don't judge you where you're women first, they judge you on the color of your skin first. So you had the black man and the black woman going in the two different directions where the black woman said, well, I'm not really trying to figure a hold on to my black, my black man and my black family, so to say, because I'm a woman first. And the, and the white woman's, and I call it for what it is. We know what it is. The white woman's reality is different than the black woman's reality. So when Absolutely. you took up that energy out of the black the black movement and gave it to them, it brought down the energy in the civil rights movement and the black family within itself. So when she said it, I said, I, just, I need to just share that with some sisters to see where people, where we are thinking right now. 
because if we don't, our same little black boys and girls are still figuring out how to be assimilated without any strength of what assimilation means. And right. then, it, then we come up with all this stuff we have today where everybody's blended and we're trying to figure out who are you. So, <laughs> you know, you know. So we'll, we'll move on to the next conversation because okay. uh, we want to before we run out of time. I know we got to we got to break that we get. Oh, matter of fact, we do have to go to a break right now. So we just talked about families and we're going to give you a message from a youth group that's doing so much for young people in their family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, building mind, body, and community. 18 years and going strong. I uh, thank my loving wife, Neva Schilling, for when we started this. I did not imagine 18 years. I still be bringing, still be bringing kids into my house, feeding them, clothing them, sheltering them, and doing whatever I got to do to be a, be a mentor or dad or whatever, or just a support system for them. And I want to thank Sister Reed for joining the team and doing all what she does to make sure our children are sturdy and steady and sturdy and sturdy and steady every day. <laughs> <laughs> and do what we do, how we do. Listen, we got a few minutes left um, before we close out tonight's show. Um, you know, when we start talking about our young people uh, and we talk about sisters, I'm just yes. talking about sisters because as much as I love my mama, I know if my daddy wasn't in the house, I wouldn't have known really what it is to be a man. And no matter I applaud any single dad that's out there, but the strength of a young girl is being taught how to be a woman by a woman who knows how to be a woman. So what advice, what would y'all say? I'm going to go around, and, you know, because I, I want to know other than uh, Michelle Obama, who are some of the women that you look up to who's been an inspiration for you? And then how do we take that same information and energy, inspire our young girls today of the strength that's within them so they don't mess up the strength that they have in them? Sister Darling, you want to kick us off on that? Sure. So I I will say that um, you know, in in terms of women that inspire me, right? Um, I had a situation years ago. Um, it was when I had my first child, I was pregnant. I'd moved to Maryland, I was living there. I got a phone call, and on the other line was a woman saying she was Whoopi Goldberg. And I'm like, okay, no, can't be. And turned out that it was her. And she had um, heard that I was on bed rest and not doing well. And so I didn't know her. She decided to, at a point when I was at my lowest, to pay for a private doctor for me and to pay for someone to stay there and clean for me and cook for me and do so much for me so a woman that i didn't know i'd seen on television but i had no clue who she was took the time to do something for me at a time when i needed it and mm -hmm. so from that moment on i've been spending my life giving back to young girls right because i believe that you know we, we're given and then we are supposed to give and so it's a calling and so for me is for young girls to love themselves, right? Love themselves and never give up because there's always somebody that is going to be there. And sometimes it's who you least expect, you mm -hmm. know, in that situation. I, I was not expecting anything, but it, it honestly, you know, saved my life and helped me to, you know, just find my passion and my calling. Wow, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for telling that. And tell Celie and other ones we say hello to then. All right. <laughs> Come on, Regina, talk to us. You heard the same question. What would you share? Who was one of your women who inspired you? And how do you take the strength that you have experienced, gained, and how you give it to another 15 year old, or six year old, or nine year old, or 21 year old, um, so they can be better as they grow older in, in womanhood? Well, well, it's two people for me. One is my grandmother. Um, my grandmother raised seven kids on her own, and she raised her grandchildren, too. Um, I was a product of that, and so was my, my older brother. Uh, my mom had me when she was 19 years old and had my brother when she was 18. And so my grandmother um, took us both while raising her other kids. Um, well, not raising them, they were adults, but they all still lived together and stayed as a community together. And um, she taught me about unconditional love. She taught me about being selfless. Uh, she taught me about how to love people, um, even though sometimes they don't love you back. And I think that has helped me with my career and being in an environment where there's a lot of racism and sexism. And it had empowered me to learn how to love myself. 
So I give that to her because she always told me I was beautiful and it took me a long time to believe it. And so she instilled in me that I should always keep a positive edge and always taught me about being fearless. And the second one is Brenda Berkman. Um, she was the woman who filed the lawsuit for the Fire Department of New York and she sued and won. And I would not be here without her. And I would not be out here without the strength that she'd endured for 25 years. Um, she was um, sexually assaulted. She was uh, physically abused. Um, she had the own union um, protesting against women being on the job. Um, and she made it up to the rank of captain. And she still, throughout the time, even when she, to, to the point that she retired, was still out here trying to get women to join the fire service because it's a really great career. And so I have to say those are the two people that shaped and helped to mold my life to where it is right now. And I and I, and I think any woman out there um, that's been able to hear my voice right now, just know that those are the strengths and keys that I used and you can use them too to move forward and gain anything you want out of life. Powerful, powerful. And I'm just gonna say for the record, all your sisters are beautiful. And I don't know when I don't care what anybody say, because black is beautiful and we beautiful. Y'all beautiful. I love you. No one told you I love you. So y'all can't want to be in love because y'all beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, give us some words of wisdom now. Your turn. So I had two women as well. Um at an early age, my grandmother went blind. At she went blind by the time she was 40 years old. So I've never known my grandmother to physically see, but I watched my grandmother get up, go be someone's home attendant while blind. I watched her help my mom raise her six children. I've watched my grandmother like go through it all. I've watched her not depend on someone else to help her. She still took care of the house. She still cooked dinner. That was where we learned how to be independent from her. We learned how to, nobody's going to help you. You have to help yourself. So my grandmother was one of the my greatest inspirations and also my godmother. She gave me my foundation of faith. She made sure that I was in church. She made sure that I believed that without God, nothing was possible, but with him, all things were possible. So those are the two women that inspire me to be who I am today. So um, as we wrap up, um, I just want to say thank you to all three of you. I think the words that you left our viewers are something that they all can walk away with. Even the yuck kids who are tuning in, they're like, hey, Mr. King. All right. So you all, everybody's mama, grandmama, great grandmama, sister, cousin, teacher, spiritual advisor. Or more importantly, when someone scrapes that knee, you're there to get that. What was that lady you used to put? The little red stuff they used to put on you when you fell and, and, and with a band aid and some cloth, yeah. You know, I, right. know. <laughs> <laughs> I went back in time on myself. Okay. <laughs> but I, I, I want to thank y'all for carrying those band aids. I want to thank y'all for keeping the lights on. And more important, I just want to thank y'all for giving a hug when the world needs a hug. You ladies are showing the strength of a woman. With that being said, thank you all again. And we're, we're, we've concluded this episode. We're going to come back next week. Again, the doors are open for y'all to return as we go into another conversation of the strength of a woman. But as we always do on King Talk Tuesdays, we end every show with the scripture. And tonight's scripture reads from Psalms chapter 56, verses 3 and 4. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God, I will praise his word. In God, I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. If no one told you today, God loves you and so do I. Your friend, your brother, and your neighbor, Andy King.